Hello. For this video, I'm going to be using Microsoft 3D Builder, which is pre-installed with Windows 10. Starting a new project and then adding two spheres to my design space, and then I'm dropping one further down. I need to select both shapes for the next operation, so I can either shift and click the second one to select it, or just simply select all if there's only the two objects on the um, screen. Then I'm going to choose intersect from the edit menu and that will give me almost like this weird space hopper type um, shape. I'm going to insert another sphere at this point because what I'd like to do is hollow out um, a little bit of that design shape even. So I'm just positioning this where, where, a sphere where I want it to be. And then I'm going to start just stretching it a little bit so that the um, indent is elongated. And then just a couple of final adjustments, tweaks. You can see all the tools that I'm using are at the bottom of the screen. So there's the move, the rotate, and also the resize. And on my view menu, I'm just going to enter the X-ray mode so that I can see by having one shape selected what it's going to do to the other shape and vice versa. So I think I'm happy with that. I'll come out of the X-ray mode, select the top shape and then subtract from the edit menu. And you can see there now I've got uh, a dip in that, um, I don't know what to call it, lozenge. It is like the space opera suites, isn't it? Uh, the flying saucers, that's what I mean. Okay, and then now I'm basically just dropping down the design in size, height wise only to about half of what it was. Now that's going to form one of my petals. So now I need to duplicate it a few times. So I'm going to start on the object menu and duplicate. And then I'll snap the second one into position. Use the rotate tool to rotate it 180 degrees. So it's basically a mirror image of the other one. And then again, I'm using select all and then duplicate and it will duplicate both shapes. Drag them so they lock into place over the others and then rotate those 90 degrees. So I'll then basically have four petal shapes in my design and that's the, the basis of my flower. I've just chosen to deselect all just because I wanted to take a look around it. Don't forget you can zoom around with your left mouse button just click and drag or you can move the workspace with your right mouse button. Again, just click and drag. I've loaded an extra sphere in here and that's going to form the center of the flower. So I'm just snapping that into position in the middle of the design. And I'm going to resize again by squashing it. With the aspect ratio lock on, I also then just resized it a little bit so it sits in the center. And once I got it smaller, I brought the size back up as well. So there you can see it sits quite proud in the middle of that flower. Now, I want to rotate the petals so that they're um, facing up. When I first did this, I was using angles of 15 degrees. However, um, this time round, it was kind of not working that well. So, so what I did is changed the angles by just using the actual handles themselves. <coughs> and I figured out that it's thinking they're already rotated. So I just have to change the angles a bit that way. If you're trying this at home, you'll probably have to do the same yourself. And of course, don't forget you've got undo, which is everyone's favorite friend. There we go, so I've got all the petals facing up, so they're more cup-like. 
more like a buttercup. Now I'm selecting all and going to the edit menu and choosing merge so that I merge all of those shapes together to become one brand new shape. Now the next thing I want to use is extrude but it only works on things that are sitting on the actual work plane surface so I've used the settle function from the object menu to make that happen. I've gone back into the extrude function and I'm positioning it so that it catches all the tips of the petals and then it will extrude down from there. So what I'm doing is ensuring that there will be a flat surface on the base so that I get the best chance of a good print when I print this out. There's no underlying or underhanging out bits. Right, uh, what I need to do now is make the holes for the button. So I'm starting off with a cylinder, unlocking the aspect ratio and using dimensions of two millimeters for the width and the depth. So I basically get a two millimeter hole through which I can sew my thread. Now I'm duplicating that three times. Two for the main holes. And one for the little stitch gully, I'll call it. Now at this point I thought actually the button is a bit too big. So what I did was drop that down in size to one inch or 25 millimeters. And then I'm just nudging these um, buttonholes around until they snap into position or are pretty much where I wanted them. There we go, I think that's about right. Now I'm shifting and clicking to select both and then grouping them because I want to be able to work with them together but there are more shapes now on the mat so I can't use select all. I'm dropping those down in height or down in position so that they will punch all the way through that shape and then using the subtract function to punch them out from that flower. Now this next part is going to be a little stitch gully so that the stitches don't sit proud of the button. They will sit within the stitch gully. So I'm positioning that in the center and I'm using the rotate function, 90 degrees, so it sits horizontally. Dropping it down onto my flower and I'll just zoom in so I get a better look at what I'm doing. Now obviously I don't want it to punch through the outside of the flowers so I am going to shorten it. There we go, and again the subtract feature, and you can see there the stitch gully has been made. So when you sew through that button, the stitches will sit in there. Mm, now, I wonder if I should do this as a four hole button. Okay, well, let's go through the undo until we get back to a point where we can start editing the individual elements and I will select my group of button holes, duplicate them, and then rotate them 90 degrees. And there we have our bits and pieces. And I'll group those four together and then subtract them so that I get my four button holes perfectly. There we go. Now I need to do the stitch gullies and I'm gonna do them crosswise. Um, but obviously if you're doing this at home, you can do them whichever way would be relevant to your stitching. To zoom in, by the way, I am using my scroll wheel on my mouse. 
if you haven't got one and you're planning on doing 3D design, it's a very good idea to get one that has got a scroll wheel because a lot of 3D design software will use them. I've duplicated that central piece by the way and then I'm grouping those two pieces together so that you punch out or subtract together. And there we go. So the stitches again will sit in those gullies and that's our button. I think however it's a bit too thick. It's going to take a fair amount to um, print. I'm just going to recolor it so I can make sure everything is actually welded together and where it should be. But I think what I would like to do is change the height a little bit. And what that might do is open out the petals a little bit too. So I'm doing this manually initially to find you know, what looks good. And I was going to do it at three millimeters, but I forgot to unlock my aspect ratio. So I undid that and went back in. And there we go. I think that is going to be where I leave it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more from John Bloodworth, Gentleman Crafter.